shaft diesels, four and a half thousand liters of fuel and a super neat and stylish tender deployment system. But we are 31 tons light ship and so a fair amount of weight aloft one would expect. So how does this Maritimo M55 feel when we're heading out in the ocean, getting up to full speed and tackling a few waves? Welcome to Sydney Harbour, ladies and gentlemen, and soon to be the Pacific Ocean because in this video, we're going to take this brand spanker of a boat. She literally is a brand spanker. Um, straight out into the ocean, uh, not a lot of swell, but we're gonna just see what we can discover into the waves, across the waves, and down the swell. Uh, we'll talk about the fuel, uh, the, the uh, engine load, and then the speed. I don't have active fuel flow that I can find I don't know if it's been calibrated, but I have filmed the sight gauge downstairs. So we've got 1,650 litres of diesel in total on board. We've got three tanks on this boat, two wing tanks and a centre tank, and they quite cleverly drain into the centre tank. So that's gonna give us a pretty good weight distribution, I would have thought, um, but we will find out. So let's do this. Currently on 800, and 90, 900 revs and rising, giving me a GPS through the water speed of 8.5 knots. Just checking all around me, gonna go through some boat wash now from a big tugboat. So I'll go through that. Okay, no water on the bow and accelerating. Let's get the boat up on the plane. Engine noise is minimal all the way up here. So she's a shaft drive. That is one of the points that many of you write to me about requesting that I test more shaft drive boats and that you desire or want a shaft drive boat. So that's what this boat is, the Maritimo uh, M550, uh, M55, sorry. Sorry, I'm getting confused. That's me just getting distracted by a warship coming up my backside. Um, so yeah, what a piece of kit this is. Shaft angle of 12 degrees. We're running the Volvo, 800 horsepowers, 4,500 litre total capacity, 1,650 on board. Let's accelerate. No stabiliser on or on board. And so we will get a true understanding of how this boat feels as we go through some of these waves. Okay, ferry clear on port, warship aft clear. My run's looking good. My speed is now at 17 knots. That feels like the boat is on the plane. Engine load at 70% at 1,800 revs. Um, you do feel a little bit of bow raise on this style of boat. I would hazard to say that's gonna be the same on any shaft drive of this style. So don't be alarmed at that. It's just what you get. Some of the IPS drives will run a little bit flatter. Um, now we're gonna accelerate a bit more, exiting the harbour in a second, going through just some rolling swell at the moment. Nothing, nothing too serious, under a metre right now. Okay, 1,900 revs, giving me 19.6 knots SOG, 72% engine load. So let's just leave it at that 70 odd percent engine load as we're offshore going into the swell. It's been blowing south easterly the last few days. So there might be a little bit of leftover southerly and some easterly swell. So we might be going into it and across it for the first part of this video. And we'll just run south for a little bit and then we'll turn around, we'll speed the boat up and we'll, we'll do wide open throttle as we come back into the harbour, I think. That's, um, that's the way to do it. Now we're seeing some, some swell. Comfortable, visibility, I'm standing, I'm gonna remain standing as I go over these waves. I can, got a clear sight line on the bow. Um, I can see out to both sides. Remembering this flybridge has overhangs. So we've got exceptional amount of space up here for a 55 foot boat, um, which is gonna make your life quite comfortable. I suspect many of you are gonna be looking for more real estate and that's why you're uh, a appealed or attracted to a boat like this. Now, here we go, turning into the swell and we'll run into these waves for a bit. These ones are a metre. Okay, up and over it. The stability is very good. You know, we've got a lot of weight aloft here. Think about the amount of 
um, construction and kilograms that it goes in, it involved in making an enclosed flybridge up here, and it's very luxurious. So I would have thought this had rocked around. I would have assumed this would rock around a lot more than it currently is, up and over some waves. And again, these are meter plus now. That's, that's very comfortable. You could do that for a considerable amount of time and not have a problem. Remember, we don't have any stabilizers on or activated this boat. So if you put a gyro, whew, that's pretty good. Hopefully that's coming up through the camera. I'm impressed. So maintaining 19.1 to 19.3 knots SOG as we go into this swell. Pretty soon, I'm going to turn across the waves and then run down swell, and I'll speed up a little bit. I've got some fishing boats drifting on my starboard bow, so I won't go too close to them, and I'll start my turn soon. One big wave, and now I'm gonna start my turn. And I'm not gonna do tight turns. This isn't the sort of boat that you go racing people on. It's a family cruiser. So, taking the swell on my port beam right now. How does that feel? Huh. That's, that's once again quite impressive. Considering I've got the swell on the beam now, obviously momentum is to my advantage. That's pretty good, guys. All right, let's hug these rocks a little bit so you get nice pictures and speed her up. 18 knots. 19, 20 knots, 2100 revs, going down the swell. Oh, she really feels like she wants to boogie here. I like this standing position in the ocean. I don't think I would transition to seated personally, just at this stage, 22.7. She really feels like she's boogieing now. So 20, 2050 to 2100 revs, down swell, I'm getting a variable speed from 21 to 23 knots. Got some boat wash on the bow now. I'm gonna increase that power just a smidgen as we re-enter the harbor. Got some swell of waves all around me. 23 knots, 2,180 revs. Feeling good, I can see all around. I like the visibility, I actually think the angle of this windscreen and not too much of an overhang is uh, to my liking because if you had a great overhang like you do downstairs, you would reduce some of that visibility. Okay, Anzac class frigate to port, he's doing 10 knots, I'm doing 23. We're gonna clear him, I'm gonna speed up and make my intentions clear. Okay, so 2,300 revs, giving me 25 knots. Let's go full speed. Okay, 2,250 revs. I have zero trim tab. I didn't feel the need to do any trim tabs at all going in or across those waves. The boat just felt like it had very good inherent stability. 26.8 knots. These are the standard 800 horsepower Volvos. 27, down swell, 27.6, 27.7 clear of the warship, clear ahead. I'm just gonna hold this course until he knows where I'm going and then I'm gonna hug these rocks to port. Okay, 27 and a half knots. Variable, feels like our wide open throttle speed. That's boogieing because we're 31 tons light ship. So there's a lot of boat here. Um, and so once you add that four and a half thousand liters of fuel, the water, the waste, your mates, you really got a lot more weight on top of that. So it's kind of what I would expect, I guess. And remember, we're not going for crazy speeds. We're going for comfort. We're going for range. We're going for adventures and having a mothership. That's what I see a boat like this really bringing to your boat life. G'day boys um, and girls, sorry, boys and girls. There's plenty of women in the Navy these days. Um, so we've seen the wide open, but I'm gonna back it off. You're not gonna drive around at 100% load all day long. I'm just gonna bring it back to that 70% again, where I like to drive. So 27 to 28 knots with the 800 horsepowers with the swell behind you. And let's just boogie along now. 
79%. So that's, where's my revs? 2,050 revs, one yacht on my starboard bow. I'm gonna go in between him and the rocks. And then I've got a kayaker up ahead. 2,040 revs, 22.2, and that's a 79% load. So now let's me bring it down to the 70% load because I reckon that's where a lot of you guys are gonna to wanna to drive this boat. Okay, 70 to 72% load. Very comfortable. You know, it almost feels, I guess it should feel sedate, shouldn't it? That's the idea. <laughs> you know, you don't wanna make your mate seasick. I don't think this is gonna be a boat that's gonna do that to you. Um, considering we don't have any stabilization and it's that good in what was up to a meter and a half at times, maybe two meter rollers, um, just when we went into some of those. But this is nice. Imagine going up and down the coast to Queensland at this 19.9, 20 knots now, 70, 70 to 73% load. Uh, that's uh, 1,950 revs there. You could do this all day and you're gonna eat up a few miles too. So that's really, really nice. I think what we need to do now is demonstrate the maneuverability of this boat with the shafts, because many of you are probably now, isn't this strange? Remember when shafts used to be everything? Now probably there's more IPS choices for you guys uh, in this size category. So you do need to get your head around how a shaft's gonna operate for your boat life. They're gonna be cheaper to run, I'll tell you now. Um, and this one's got a joystick. So having had a little crack at that this morning because we did have to top up on the fuel, I was very impressed. It's almost like running an IPS. So, so if you're worried about your skill set parking something like this, I'm gonna say from what I learned before that now with this joystick combined with the hydraulic bow and stern thrusters and the shafts, you probably don't need to be so so stressed out, if you are. So let me just come off the plane. I'm gonna tuck in somewhere close so you have a reference point and I'll, I'll tell you and I'll show you exactly what I mean driving from up here and then we'll go down to the lower helm for a parking demonstration. All right, so I'm in a protected part of the harbour now. I've transitioned to the seated position. I love the footrests that we have available to us. And we have another one up front. We'll check that in the walkthrough, but just doing a throttle transverse thrust to port, she really gets up and goes. So we've got a lot of torque here. You can increase that power. So look at that. If you really need to get the boat moving, not a problem. Um, she's gonna go, um, but, but, this twin disc joystick system. Okay, so you just press station select. Okay, now it's activated. I'm gonna stand up for this. This is great, guys. This feels like IPS. So I'm using hydraulic variable speed thrusters there and I'm just slipping the boat to starboard right now. And now if I wanna do uh, introduce some turn, I can just swivel it and it's just doing it with the joystick. So really, really easy, user friendly like that. But the thing I wanna point out or, or convey to you is when you engage the joystick forward, I'm gonna do that now, the engines have engaged in the most smooth manner that I have ever experienced with one of these joystick systems with shaft. That didn't even feel like, you, you, you don't notice it, is what I'm trying to convey. And then when you're steering, it's actually steering with the thrusters. So if you apply a little bit of starboard down like I am now, and we, we're doing four knots, so you can drive into the marina using this. Um, that's my phone ringing. That's fantastic. So now I'm just gonna engage reverse. Once again, super smooth engagement of the props there. So this is great for using in a marina. Very, very user-friendly. Now, if I want to um, 
transfer from up here down to the lower station. All I have to do is press station select when I get there. Or if I wanna go back to the throttles, same again, just station select, there you go. The lights lit up and now I'm back to old fashioned driving, so that's good. Um, now I think before we actually drop the pick, I really should just play with the trim tabs so we can see what, if any, difference that makes to our speed. So I'm gonna do that with you right now and we shall test that in flat water where we're going to get our most accurate depiction. I was quite happy not using any trim tabs offshore with the bouncy water, but I suspect if I flatten that bow out a bit, God, this water's beautiful and clear. I'm kicking up a bit of mud there. Okay, so from still, one knot forward, accelerate, let's do this. I'm gonna stay in the seated position for this one, just see how it feels. All right, 1,000 revs, 1,200, 1,300, just a slow acceleration. I don't like to go from nothing to full bore on any boat. 1,500, 1,600, 12 knots. She's starting to get up on the plane. 70% engine load, 13, 14 knots, increasing, 75% load, 1,800, 1,850, okay. Now we're up on the plane, 18 knots on climbing. I have no trim tab yet, but I'm just gonna test it once we're at wide open. All right, 2,000, 2,100, 2,150. All right, that's foot to the floor, 24 knots and climbing. Now I'm gonna, in the flat water here, I'm going to lower the bow, 26. Let's lower the bow, see what happens. If we get some of that, 27, here we go. That's one quarter trim tab down, 27 and a half already. That's half trim tab down. 2 I thought that was valuable for you guys in your boat search and your boat life. God, this is lovely. I do enjoy being elevated like this. Um, so what would you compare this boat to? I think it's got to be the Riviera 54 um, flybridge, enclosed flybridge. That's clearly a direct competitor to this. Um, something else, maybe the Viking, although I don't think so um, for most of you, because that's you know standard with 1,400 horsepowers. Uh, much faster, heavier fuel capacity, so much more fishing focused. Um, but for those of you, you know, looking for extra real estate, looking for something that's gonna take you a long way, looking for something that's rugged, and really, I do think this is a, an adventure boat mothership in the making. This is really, really epic for a lot of fun activities that you've probably got in mind. Um, if that's you, this is gonna be an amazing boat. So don't forget to subscribe. Please support the Patreon. Um, if you want to compare this with something else, I'll pop a link up 
on the screen right now. My name's Dan Jones. You've been watching Dan's Boat Life. Thanks. See you on the next one.